Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. So in this video, we are going to discuss Geeks for Geeks problem of the day and today's problem is nth catalan number and it is a medium level problem. So this is a very basic DP problem and this particular problem says that we have been given a number n and we have to find the nth catalan number. They have roughly defined actually what is a catalan number. They have said that, that for any number n, it is equal to the number of expressions containing n pairs of parentheses that are correctly matched. Right. Now we have to print the answer modulo 10 raised to the power 9 plus 7 and they have said that the position start from 0. Right. So actually there exists a formula for Catalan number. Let me just write it for you. So it is I believe 2 n factorial upon n plus 1 factorial into n factorial. Right. So this is the formula for Catalan number. You can also use this formula to find your answer and you will be able to find it in O of n time your final answer because O of n time will be used for pre-computation and for calculating the modular multiplicative inverse you would use log n time. So the large factor is O of n so we are going to use that right. But uh, we are not going to discuss this particular method for now because the question expects us to solve it in n square time and O of n space right. So this is what the question is demanding. So I assume that they are looking for the DP solution. So that is why we are going to discuss the DP solution, not this mathematical formula one. So I would say like this problem is much similar to the MCM problem or the matrix chain multiplication problem. But let us discuss what we can do in this particular problem. So they say that uh, we have been given some parentheses, right? So let's say if the value of n is three, that means there will be three pairs of parentheses. That means there will be a total of six parentheses, right? So three pairs of parentheses can exist in how many ways? This is our problem, right? So the first way they can exist is like this, right? So you see that we have got three pairs of parentheses and a total of six parentheses, right? So one other way can be something like this and it, it can also be like this, right? Similarly, it can also be like this and so on right. So this is how we can form different types of parentheses with the same set of n is equal to 3 pairs of parentheses right. Now we have to uh, find out how many ways are there for any such number n right. So the idea is very simple let us say let us say you have some groups of parentheses. So I am talking about n is equal to 3 only. So I have denoted 3 pairs of parentheses right. So if I have three pairs of parentheses, what I can do is I can say that this pair can try to form any number of parentheses among themselves and these two will try to form any number of parentheses among them. Let us say these form x1 and these form x2, right. So why am I writing x1? So x1 is because there is only one pair of parentheses here and x2 is because there are two pairs of parentheses among them. Right. So let us say there were x, x1 number of ways from here and x2 number of ways from here. In this configuration, the total number of ways will be x1 into x2. Right. Now, let me just try to move this separation a bit forward. So let us say now these two are together and this one is alone. Right. So how many pairs of parentheses will be there in this case? So it will be x2 into x1. Right. And if I add both of those, if I add both of those, this will be equals to the total number of parentheses I can form, right. Why am I multiplying and why am I adding here? You will see that in this particular scenario, if it is x2 and if this is x1, these two things are dependent on each other, right. So if you have done permutations and combinations, you know this that these two configurations are dependent on each other. That is why I am multiplying both of them, right. And since this particular configuration and this particular configuration was independent of each other that is why I am adding both of them to find the total number of ways possible, right. Now let us consider a bigger example for n is equals to 5. So if I have 5 pairs of parentheses, remember that I am always talking about pairs, right. That is why I can take one here, right. If I was talking about single parenthesis then I would have to take at least two so that they can form a valid pair of parenthesis, right. Now let us say that the partition is something like this. So the number of ways possible in this particular configuration is equals to the number of parentheses this one single group can form and multiplied by the number of parentheses configurations these four pairs can form. So it is x1 into x4, right. Now 
I can do the same thing. I can try to extend this further and I can say that I can add x2 into x3 into my answer because in this particular configuration, these two can form x2 number of valid configurations and these three can form x3 number of valid configurations. Right. So now what I'll have is these two values added to my answer. Now again, I can try to move this border or move this separation forward and now I will have x3 and x2 respectively. Right. So I can add x3 into x2. Similarly, if I move one step forward, I will have these four groups together and this one will be left alone. So I can add x4 into x1. Right. So for n is equal to 5, if I add all of these values, then I will get my answer for n is equal to 5. But are you able to observe one very important thing in all of these cases? When we were trying to calculate the answer for n is equal to 5, it is depending upon all the smaller values, right? You see it is depending upon x1, x2, x3, x4, right? It is depending on all the smaller values. That means if I know the answer for x1, x2, x3 and x4, I will be able to find the answer for n is equal to 5, right? Similarly, if I also know the answer for n is equal to 5, with the help of this information, I can also find the answer for n is equal to 6. So from here, we can form a DP relation where we can store the answers for all n starting from 1 to whatever value we want. Let's say 10 to the power 3, right? And for each input, we can make an n square loop and we'll be able to find our answer, right? So this was pretty much clear, I believe, that for every value of n, it is depending on smaller values. Now, how is it coming out to be an n square loop? For example, you will be traversing through 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and so on. Now, for each traversal, you are also trying to divide it into smaller groups, right? First, you are at this particular position, then you are at this particular position, then in the next position and then in the next position. You are trying to divide your n pairs of parentheses into two groups, right? So, this will also take O of n time. That is why the overall time complexity is going to be O of n square. Right. And the space complexity is obviously O of n because you are using only a single dimensional array to store all the values. So this was all about today's problem of the day. I hope that you guys were able to understand the solution. Now let me show you my final submission, what I did. So you see, I have first of all initialized my mod value with 10 to the power 9 plus 7. Now I have initialized a long long vector. The only reason why I have taken long long is to avoid overflows because sometimes it does overflow when we take integers. Right. So I've initialized my dp of size n plus 1 and I've set up a base case for dp of 0 is equal to 1. Now I'm starting a simple for loop from i is equal to 1 till less than n plus 1 and the second for loop will be from 0 till less than i. So what is this second for loop denoting? Let me just explain you clearly. So for example, if I'm talking about 5, 5 pairs, right? So let us say that this is pair number 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4, right? So if I take this in the first group, then how many elements will be remaining in the second group? That is 5 minus 0 minus 1 and that is equal to 4, right? Now if I take, now if I take these two elements in the first group, how many elements will be remaining in the second group? That is 5 minus 1 minus 1 and that is equal to 3 elements or 3 pairs of parentheses. That is why I am going to add dp of j into dp of i minus j minus 1. So i is denoting the nth catalan number that I am trying to calculate and j is denoting the positions I am trying to fix. So first of all I fixed one element, then I fixed two elements, then I fixed three elements and so on. So this is what the j loop is going to do. Now let us come back here. You see I am just setting dp of i as dp of i plus dp of j into dp of i minus j minus 1. I have already told you why is this j and why is this i minus j minus 1. Now I am just multiplying them and taking their mod and then again after adding with this value I am taking the mod, right. So after all of this has been done I can just return dp of n and that would be my final answer. So let me just quickly submit this and show you that this particular solution works and it is absolutely correct. So you see it passes all the test cases. I hope that you guys were able to understand the solution. If you guys did, then consider dropping a like on this video and don't forget to share thoughts in the comments because your engagement with this particular video really helps the YouTube algorithm to understand that this video is actually helpful for you and it will be able to reach more number of people like you who want to keep solving new problems. 
So I see a lot of people who watch these videos have not subscribed yet. In case you're one of them, then definitely consider subscribing. It's always free of cost and you can always unsubscribe if you don't find the videos interesting later. So share the channel with your friends. Until the next video drops, keep coding, stay safe, bye-bye.